nice. I, I, I had to clean up my room a little bit too before we started it. Mine's a fucking mess. I just got back from LA, so. Oh, really? All right. When? Yeah. Uh, um, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Commas with the Cast. I'm your host, Brandon Whipple, and today I am joined by a very special guest. You know him as the badass motherfucker from DK's. He's Colin Rowland Soldier. Colin, how are you doing? Oh, well, well, what do we have here? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> uh, What's that Trump, traumatizing line. Hey, the, the, that line right there, the, a lot of people, when they see me, they'll, they'll say that. <laughs> really yeah <laughs> it, yeah i think that's your most well-known line from that movie because both the brothers say it yeah yeah <laughs> that's awesome so how are you doing man doing pretty good um i just released my first single today for my uh hell music. yeah i saw that yeah, that was pretty cool that's on Bandcap on my uh, you just gotta go to my Instagram page. It's got a link on my bio. But uh, I'll link, I'll link it in the description too for those watching on YouTube. Like, cool. Yeah. It'll, it'll be on Apple Music and everything next week. I don't have like an official release date on that yet, but uh, it's like going through the oh, process. Hell yeah. Nice. Um. So, can you tell audiences a bit about yourself? Because I think what pe most people would know is just what you they saw in DKs. Well, um, I haven't done much acting. DK's is like my my first uh, major thing besides the 911 video me and Brandon made for. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> that one right there, everyone's like, wow, this dude's, this is grade A acting right here. So I was like, I gotta, I gotta keep going. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I live here in uh, Mission. On the Rosewood Indian Reservation, my name's Colin Whirlwind Soldier. Uh, uh, right now, I just started working for the uh, team shelter in St. Francis. So I've been, oh, uh, that's been taking up a, a lot of my day. Um, I, I was working at the radio station, which uh, was kind of like how me and Brandon first met working for the IT department and everything. But uh, I ended up having to leave there just because of the coronavirus and I had to homeschool my kids for a while. But then uh, AT and T ended up letting off my significant other, so she stays home with the kids. And I was able to get a job again. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I remember. I think we unofficially first met um, at the Blue Phoenix premiere. Oh yeah. Um, back in 2019. Yeah, that was crazy because that day. That wasn't really like, um, it was like the, the president's office for the for the tribe. They're handing out the roses to everybody and stuff. And, you know, that's not even my job, but they asked me if I could come in, uh, like talk because Rodney wasn't able to be there. Mm -hmm. So like, that was like the only reason why I was actually there that day. And I ended up seeing Blue Phoenix. It was like, blew my mind. I was like, wow, like, this, is, this is good right here. And it's crazy because then I, we are actually starting to film the third one like this week and just okay. comparing the first one and the third one it's like it's so different now yeah like, it's crazy <clears throat> um so you you um you obviously you you're an artist you do music and everything so kind of what's it like to balance making music and now acting um acting is a little more challenging because like I want to get out there and do more things, but it's hard. Like you have to find the people that will give you the chance or like, you know, be able to, uh, um, I don't know, but maybe I, I was thinking about getting into my own, maybe doing a little acting on like TikTok or something just to, just like, uh, like put myself out there, you know, it's kind of hard mm -hmm. uh, doing those casting calls and stuff. Like it's hard uh, yeah. finding, finding roles. Yeah, especially like around here and now with yeah, COVID and everything. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, it's definitely a kind of a fucking shit deal 
especially around here, yeah, which is kind of I... why uh, I had to make everything on my own in high school because yeah. I knew this is like the field I wanted to go into. And I wasn't too keen on acting on stage because like you've, you've, you've witnessed this as we were shooting. I fuck up a lot just on set. And yeah. so I, I feel like I'd put too much pressure on myself on stage. You know, oh, to like make it perfect. Like you gotta be. Yeah. yeah Acting is for sure more difficult than music. I've been doing music for a long time, and like over the years, it's gotten uh, easier just because of technology. But with acting, it's just like this, this is a whole new. Uh, I, I guess like for our area, you, you would be like the pioneer of this. You know what I mean? You're the first one. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, anyways. Yeah, which is is weird. I, I've I haven't heard of anyone else who took it. Yeah, as far as I, as I did. Yeah, um, that's, like, that's like one of the coolest parts about like doing all these movies and stuff. So it's like, like boom, putting the flag down. Boom, first one's here doing mm -hmm. this. Like, yeah, it's pretty awesome. For sure. And then now, especially with DKs and this newfound success and how it's been performing since it we released the movie version. Yo, um, DKs, I can't believe how it took off. Like, it is doing great. I think yeah. it's at, at the time of recording this, it's at 23,000. Wow. 23,000. Dude, that's like, that's huge right there, especially for like a whole movie length. You know what I mean? Some people don't get that much plays on their songs. You know, yeah. Songs just a little short, short, you know, three minutes, five minutes. This is and I, two hours. Yeah. And, I, and the reason, or part of the reason we released it episodically initially is because I didn't expect people to watch a 90 minute video. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, for me, I don't. Also, if I see like the hour mark on a YouTube video, I'm like, well, I'm not watching that. Um, yeah. But it, it's doing great. It's doing better than we than the episode versions did. And so this might be a form we do more in the future. And I guess we are now doing it with another project we're working on together, Thunderbird. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. I have a list of questions I've prepared. Um, <laughs> we could talk about all those later. Um, so what exactly made you want to get into acting? Because I know at one point you approached me and said if I ever had anything to let you know. Um, but. It's kind of just one of those things where uh, I'm the type of person where I like kind of uh, doing a lot of different things, you know, like I, I'm not afraid to, to try something out. Like uh, I was doing a rodeo for a little bit. I tested out riding some bulls and stuff. And like, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that was fun. You know, it wasn't really for me, you know what I mean? But like, I just like doing things, you know? So like yeah. the acting, I was like, it's something I always wanted to try and stuff. And like music wise, uh, mm -hmm. you're watching Straight Outta Compton. Oh uh, yeah. And stuff, and then like how Ice mm -hmm. Cube, that's kind of how Ice Cube was. He like uh, he he wrote for the script for Friday and everything, and like, he he was just doing like a lot of different things. So I, I like trying to, you know, what's it called? Expand my horizons. You know, for sure. It's it's definitely for me. I think I prefer directing and writing over acting. It's because I like kind of, um, and I've when I act in stuff that I'm not directing or anything it, like it feels weird because I'm so used to being the one in control yeah and everything and like steering the ships whenever it's someone else like it's it's nice it's not have to worry about that but it's this weird like giving up of this this power that I've been so used to forever and on, I guess I'm just also just more comfortable behind a camera than on like obviously I can get on get on a camera and act and do a bunch of shit and but i just feel like it's easier for me to have a firm grip on the direction of things if i'm strictly behind the camera yeah yeah um, um so i guess now we could jump into dk's um so what were your initial thoughts on like the dk's itself and like the script when i first approached you about it oh we like Whenever you first approached me, I was just like, yeah, like, it, 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 sounded, it sounded good to me because I was like, uh, there hasn't really been too many, like, zombie things in the major, like, you know, major films or anything, like, uh, was that, uh, oh, 
Well, the old, the Walking Dead. The Walking Dead hasn't really been popular for a long time and stuff. So yeah. I was like, this right here is pretty cool. And then um, we kind of dropped everything. I feel like a lot of people are watching it around uh, like Halloween and stuff. Cause it's kind of like, a, you know what I mean? It falls into that category. Yeah. But, I, I honestly wish I would have released the director's cut sooner, like earlier in the month. I feel like it, we could have gotten a lot more. Um, exposure at this point, but I guess I'll now I'll know for the future and everything. Even less, too. But, though, you know? Yeah, like, that's true. Like a lot of it, all about timing and the algorithm of YouTube and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. it's perfect for sure. And um, on the analytics and everything for the video, it spiked on Halloween. Oh, nice. Because like, because especially with COVID and everything, there wasn't trick-or-treating or, or anything in like a lot of different places so a lot yeah. of people stayed in and then they did they watched our movie which i think is so fucking cool yeah i, I watched the, the the other one you did too uh oh that horror one. short yeah uh yeah, he, he's inside yeah. yeah yeah that one was fun that was like a three-hour shoot i did while i was in la really yeah so it was like a low stakes just because a lot of the my actor friends up there haven't been able to work on anything for like a long time because mm -hmm. LA is still so shut down. And so then here I came with my camera and she was like, let's do a thing. And I think I wrote that script like a night. Like yeah. I, I obviously I took it seriously, but it wasn't like this is going to make or break my career, you know, it's a little yeah, fun it's side fun. side project. Mainly for like fun or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty um, cool too, being um, like hanging around, hanging out around people that are like into the same stuff as you. Like, I've never chilled with oh, a lot of actors and stuff. Like, that, that was probably real fun. Oh, it, it is great, and like, yeah. just not not to throw um shade or anything, but like working with the actors in my new show, the Hayden Harvey show, is so relieving as like compared to working with the with some of the FI actors. Yeah. Because, like, these people, they're so fucking into it. They love this shit. And the FI actors are like, sure. You know? Yeah. You got to get them a little more motivated to. Yeah. But, but I was down in Arizona a couple weeks ago and, like, I was around a bunch of other music artists and, like, it's the same type of thing. So that's what I was thinking. Like, if I was hanging around a bunch of uh, um, actors and stuff, it'd be cool to, you know, pick up tips from each other and stuff. Mm -hmm. for uh, sure ask questions, practice you know, all kinds of stuff um with dk's did did it turn out how you thought it was going to mm, i didn't really have no like like uh you know i didn't have like a low expectation or a high expectation i was just like we're gonna get out of this whatever we put into it and like that's why like uh, a lot of my scenes like i was, I was really trying hard you know what i mean i was kind of mm -hmm. i was kind of slacking on the line memorization but I really wanted to put in the effort to make it good. So like, I feel like regardless of how it came out, I was going to love it either way because like, I don't know, we just put in so much work into that. You know what I mean? Yeah. All, all the hiking and uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> staying no. up late, waking up early. The fucking, the fucking hiking. That that was um, a night. I think that was like the second and third day of shooting. We went out to the woods <laughs> to shoot all that and it was fucking awful. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, uh, we got we got fucking rained rained out like horribly horribly yes it's a word um and yeah because you like we filmed until like i want to say 3 a.m yeah and then you left and came back at like six yeah <laughs> and like was, the yeah. rest of us got like two out we, we basically took a fucking nap yeah and then we then we started filming our fight scene in the creek <laughs> which was so fucking cool i think that was one of the coolest fight scenes in the movie yeah yeah it was i like the part where i throw you in the water <laughs> man i remember i was so fucking nervous because it was like oh this is we can we only have one shot at this yeah we fucked this up <laughs> fucking jesse was on camera just worst case scenario oh i didn't press record fuck Man, that would have sucked. <laughs> it was cold. I remember we, um, after that, we, like, walked back to my grandma's place because we were filming behind her house because we had to get you and 
zombie makeup. Oh, remember yeah. that that walk back was awful because like we were both just soggy and just gross. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> shuffling through a field and shit. Yeah. Like my shoes were all sloppy and squishy and shit. And it just Flip wasn't water. it. Yeah, that was, that was a tough one. It was fun. Like, though. I got the, white teeth uh, sick. Like the, sitting through the makeup and having to do like underneath the eyes and stuff. That was like one of the hardest parts for me, like having to keep my eye open. Oh, uh. <laughs> uh, I um, we debated actually um doing something with my eye after Big B lost it to like kind of like show the wound. Yeah, but we we scrapped that pretty fast because we didn't really have the materials to do it, and I don't know how I would be able to react with that. Like so, like like a slim covering over my eye, like a, that mimics a stab. Yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe one day we do a sequel. Um, so I, I actually wanted to ask you this before, but I was like, I'm going to save this for the podcast. Um, who did you like playing more, Sean or Richard? Mm, that's a tough one. Um, also, there's, there's some people who didn't realize that that was you in both those roles. Really? There was somebody like, wait, that's the same guy? And it's like, yeah, they're twins. And they're like, oh, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I probably like Richard more because I got a henchman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think cool. are the yeah, what do you think are the differences between those two characters? Like, how did you approach them separately? With Sean, I, I was kind of more in like a just like straight like wild person mentality like a maniac like at all times full of speed but then with Richard uh it was more of a remember I started off kind of being more chill more calm and then once mm-hmm. I found out that they uh, killed my brother that, that's whenever I started getting a little crazy and I was like kind of letting loose like yeah know, like a, a calm person kind of let, let, let that side out for the first time definitely yeah I think that the scene where um richard kills steven is probably one of the the most haunting scenes from the movie yeah because and it's i think it's so well done because throughout the scene steven is never in immediate danger because richard first targets big b because he he sees that he had sean's revolver and it's like the guy is like, oh, he's going to fucking kill Bigby. But then Norman takes the blame for it. So he, his focus is shifted to Norman. Then, like, oh, fuck, he's going to kill Norman. And then out of fucking nowhere, he just kills Steven. And I yeah, think it the, caught a lot of people off the, guard. The, the, the first time I got killed, um, my, oh, no, no, not. So not whenever I die in the river or in the creek, but whenever I die, um, whenever Steven's smashing my head in. Mm-hmm. So on that part, my daughter was watching it, and she started. Like, <laughs> she was like, "No, daddy!" And I was like, I'm, like I'm, I'm, "I'm right here! I'm right here!" <laughs> like, oh no! I was getting killed or something. But I was like, "Oh it's shit!" It's pretty cool. Like so it makes it. Uh, it must have been pretty realistic. Yeah. The hammer coming down and everything. <laughs> I thought that was cool too because it was foreshadowing for when Stephen died. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, so what was it like to shoot the scene when Richard killed Steven? I think it was, uh, I was just really excited to get to smash in that bag, you know, like, <laughs> to, to start mm. trying to make the blood splatter yeah. and stuff. Yeah, our, our blood bag. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that was, that was like the coolest part of it, just the actual action of doing it. I was just so mm. excited to do that. And, uh, I was also trying hard to flex my muscles and stuff for the camera. <laughs> but I was doing it. It didn't show up too much on there, but I was like trying my hardest. <laughs> okay. Then that, I was like kind of worried because what I'd initially planned to do was basically what we did, but instead of you using the real hammer, we were going to have you use the stunt hammer. Yeah. And then that's what, that's what we did with Steven and he killed Sean. But then as you remember, he broke the fucking hammer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so I was like, I was like, fuck, we can't do that again. And so I was like, well, shit, you just have to use the real hammer and hopefully not kill Thaddeus. Because I'm like, how he was positioned, he was laying there and his head is kind of cranked to the side and that bag was like right next to his head. 
Is yeah. that how we had it? Yeah. Fuck. And I, man, I, I give Katadi so much fucking credit for that. I don't know if I'd be able to do that shit. Yeah. It's like a, definitely a lot of trust and everything. <laughs> yeah. Not getting your head caved in. Um, Coming down. <laughs> and so, and then our fight scene immediately after that, I thought was fucking really cool too. And it's like up there with the creek fight. Yeah. Um, just because of like the brutality of it. And and I, this wasn't even intentional, but that garage we shot in was so fucking dusty. And like every punch, dust was flying off. And it looks so fucking cool on camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed that too whenever I was watching. It's kind of like, mm-hmm. yeah, poofing off. Um, so yeah, we fought four times in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Because Big Beef, he fought both of the brothers, both as when they were alive and then they were a DK. Yeah. Um, what was it like to die three times in a movie? Um, I, I wasn't trying to uh, spoil it to my um, family at home, like spoil the movie. So like whenever I first told them I died, I was like, oh, I should never did that because I die again. I forgot or whatever. So then like whenever I told them I was going back to film again, I um, I, I told them I was uh, going to uh film like a flashback scene or whatever mm-hmm. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah i don't know it, it was kind of i was like damn it this whole movie i'm just getting took because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you obviously bigby kills you in the creek and then steven kills you and then you don't actually die as richard because you turn into a dk and then yeah. norman shoots you in the head I also think it's so funny that the three main characters each killed you once. Yeah, yeah. Which I think is so cool. And that's something I didn't even realize until Thaddeus pointed it out to me. Um, so, you know, so your family watched the movie? Yeah, yeah. What did they think of it? They um loved it. Like, well, my kids were, like, really into it. Like, they were just, like, watching the whole time. And it's kind of hard to get them to do that, especially for a scary movie. You know what I mean? They're kind of mm-hmm. younger. But uh, yeah, they they uh, loved it. Like the scenes around fight and stuff, they got them every time. Like, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so were they rooting for you, or were they rooting for the the protagonist? I'm guessing they were rooting for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> um, you 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 got recognized, didn't you? Yeah, I was um I was in Rosebud. At all stop and someone came up to me they're like hey you're that guy from that movie right i was like yeah he's like i just watched it last night <laughs> i was like nice nice. that and then he, nice. he was like it was a good job and stuff he was asking about a sequel and like, i don't know it's kind of a small talk yeah but, that's that's cool i got recognized in mission and pride oh um, yeah basically same situation like, oh shit you're big b i was like that that that's me it, it caught me off guard because i was i fully wasn't expecting it because i was just there to get fucking i don't know fucking a bag of chips or some shit on my way <laughs> on my way to work but then fucking got recognized and it's definitely weird it's a very weird feeling you know yeah well like it, it, it like caught me off guard because i'm used to people recognizing me from like uh dj events or uh I don't know, from the radio station. Sometimes people go recognize my voice, things like that. But whenever you said, you're the guy from the movie, I was just like, oh, I was like, what? Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know. It was pretty cool. I was like, man, that's awesome. Someone recognized me from that. So sick. I think it, um, so it, it obviously it did its rounds like around this area. But surprisingly, our main audience isn't the United States. It's actually the Philippines. Nice, wicked. Um, about twenty-seven percent of the people who watch DK is from the Philippines. And then yeah. eight, eighteen percent is United States, and then like seven percent Indonesia, and then four percent India, and then it just keeps going down, and everything. And like we, we, we reached a lot of people from different places in the world. So I think this is Damn. so sick. 
Dude, but what'd you do if we just like blew up in the Philippines and like we go out there for like, like I don't know, <laughs> like, like a their, their version of comic like Comic Con, but like with us out there. Hey, what's up? The the DKs cast. Yeah, go pray for us in the city. Oh no way! <laughs> maybe maybe if we hit a mill, that'd yeah. be crazy. That would. Damn, that would. Cool. Um, and so with this and i've talked about this with jesse and thaddeus and everyone because we did a commentary for the movie for halloween and obviously with its newfound success a lot of people are like well, are you doing a sequel what the fuck's going on you know yeah. anyway i even talked about this with um Alyssa, and i think a sequel is definitely a possibility. Oh, what the fuck? Alexa's talking. Alexa, stop. Why is she playing music? Alexa, stop. Okay, whatever. Um, Alexa, play it so anyway, again. I got you in headphones, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> um, so, a sequel is definitely in the realm of possibilities. I just, I don't. I wouldn't want to rush into it just because the new, the, the first one's doing well, you know? Yeah. Because um, obviously we have our um, criticisms and everything about the first one. They're mostly, I don't find them valid because a lot of them are just like, you need more zombies and more gore. And I'm just like, <laughs> it's not really that type of movie, you know? Yeah. Like obviously it's a zombie apocalypse movie, but I feel like it, we're more focused on the survivors themselves and how this world affects them and the zombies has a byproduct of that um so that those ones are kind of brushed off but oops, i fucking lost my train of thought what was i saying oh it's sequel um prequel prequel i don't even know what we would do <laughs> we pretty much covered everything like big b his family's dead and everything yeah. but um no if we were to do a sequel i, I don't want to rush into it i want to i would only want to do it if the story was right yeah and there's definitely some ideas that are being thrown around i was like that could be fucking cool um and obviously we set up a sequel and I, that's kind of just for me laying the groundwork if i were to return to it obviously with like azalea and a lot and everything um so yeah i guess we on, only time will tell and if we'll do a sequel or not and you're dead as shit, so I just don't know if it doesn't really apply to you. Yeah, yeah. That's why I said yeah. prequel. <laughs> oh, I, oh, yeah. Let's, we could, that, I'll stick with that, be though. And Sean and Richard prequel movie. Sean and Richard like, and Azalea. Yeah, like, what the fuck's their deal, you know? Yeah. That'd be cool, because we don't learn a lot about them in the movie, actually. I mean, we do, like, they have a group and everything. And they must be a pretty big group of azaleas willing to go to California and bring everyone with them. Um, know, we'll see. There's definitely a lot of ways we could take a sequel and or a prequel or anything, really. But I'm, I'm excited. There's definitely a lot of potential. Um, what would you want to see in a sequel slash prequel if we were, we were to do one? Um... I don't know, maybe, maybe just uh, just everything everything that we already had times ten, a little more fight scenes, maybe uh, more zombies. I'm not too sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, um, like, there, there isn't too much you can add to it. Um, but more storyline, yeah. maybe. I'm not too sure. Yeah. Well, it, it's definitely. Um, it's going to be interesting, whatever we do decide to do, like whether if we do do a sequel. Um, a lot of people are asking for it, though, like a lot. So yeah. I think, and this isn't confirmation or anything, but I think a lot, I think we're definitely leaning more towards doing one than not. Again, it's just a matter of getting the right story. Because I don't want to train to boost on this shit and do an amazing first one and then a so so sequel you know yeah because they did another one it was called peninsula and i haven't seen it but i guess it's like not nearly as good as the first and yeah. so i don't hey, want to do hmm. uh 
You should start applying for more uh, grants and stuff to do film. Get money. Do you? Yeah, uh, get money to do it. Uh, I don't know, spend more money on special effects or uh, high quality makeup or uh, mm -hmm. a professional stunt double. That'd be cool. <laughs> I'm Tom Cruise in this show. I'm doing my own stunts, like until I physically can't. Yeah. Um, tigers or something. I don't know. Zombie tiger. tigers. <laughs> Fuck. Same up for a tiger. Um, speaking of makeup, you were in the makeup chair quite a bit. What was that like? Because you were a zombie twice and you had like the gunshot wound and all this shit. So, what was it like yeah, getting I all that makeup done? It's kind of tough. It takes a lot of patience. And like mm -hmm. every once in a while, I just have to like take a little walk and just breathe because it's like, oh, like I don't know. You're, you know, sitting there, and you got to be so still and stuff. And it's like, oh man, it's taking forever. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> the feeling of dread. It's just like, oh man. But definitely, it, it, it's for sure worth it. It's like everyone, everyone that I talked to about the movie, they complimented like the gunshot wounds and. Uh, all our makeup and stuff so I was like yeah that's cool because yeah I, I sat there for a long time the, the the toughest part hands down is the eyes like underneath though that was uh, that was tough for me because i got like curly eyelashes so i kept mm -hmm. hitting the brush and i was like ah. like yeah. towards... See, i never <laughs> had to do that because i was never a zombie in the movie oh yeah. um basically everyone was except like me yeah, because even Jesse, he played a DK in the opening, and then he obviously he played he was a DK again in the end when Norman died, and Thaddeus was a DK. You were a DK, and this I was never in the zombie makeup. I had all the bruising and shit from Richard fucked me up. Yeah, so that was really it. Um, so yeah, I I guess I don't know. I think when um Sophie did all the bites on you, that was amazing. No, for yeah. Richard's final scene. Yeah, that was cool. All my arms everywhere. Cause he just looked scary, and I think that's such a it's such a cool shot when Norman and Bigby are kind of arguing, and then you just fucking shamble into the background. So I guess we could shift gears a bit now. Um, so this is actually this is an announcement. This I don't think this has been said anymore. Um. But you are going to be in the Thunderbird movie. Thunderbird. Um, and obviously that project right now is kind of shrouded in secrecy and everything, and not there's not a lot out there about it right now. Um, so being as non-spoilery as possible, kind of like, are you excited for Thunderbird, and what elements are you excited about? I'm just excited for people to see how it unfolds and uh, the storyline and everything. And then uh, also like the filming locations, that's going to be awesome. That was actually like the, the toughest part of getting it filmed. We were supposed to already film a little bit of it, but mm -hmm. you know, it just didn't work out. I had a lot going on. And then I went on that Arizona trip. I don't know if you were already gone in LA by that time. I Might think you went to Arizona, then you came back, and then there's this weird window when we were both back. Yeah. I think there's like a week window, and we were going to shoot, but then we didn't, and then I went to LA, and now we're, because that, that was actually supposed to come out for Thanksgiving. Yeah. And now we're delaying it to March. And I think this is going to work out for the best because the original plan was, and this also wasn't said anywhere, we were going to do Thunderbird 1, like a, the short film in mm. November, and then do another one. And uh, people are yelling at my house, holy hell. But we were going to do a, another one in March and just two different short films. But now we're combining them together into just one feature. Oh, film. really? Yeah. Okay. Nice. So yeah, that'll be, be good. Put, we'll have a lot, lot more time on our hands and stuff. Yeah. And so I'm thinking we're going to start shooting that in January. January? Yeah. Because this month I'm shooting Blue Phoenix 3. Next month I'm shooting Falcon Knight 2. 
So then January will be Thunderbird. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm so excited about this project. And that teaser got a lot of positive feedback, both from the Native American community and, and not. Like I had friends in LA say that they're very excited for it. And obviously just judging on the first two teasers, it's very Native American centric and like the mythology yeah. and legends and everything. I'm very excited for people to see this. Um, Over in the was, uh, Philippines, they might love it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> our, our biggest family. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah, fucking shout out to the Philippines. Um, but I think this project has so much potential. And as I was writing it and everything, what I my approach was I kind of wanted to do what I wanted this movie to do. How am I gonna word this? Okay. I wanted to do for Native Americans what Black Panther did for African Americans. Yeah, yeah, like a movie that isn't, it's not just, it's not a big deal because it has a Native American lead. It's a big deal because it's centered around Native American culture. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm pretty excited for it. I feel like it's, it's going to be really good just based off that alone and then seeing what mm -hmm. the, I mean, it, now that I know the Philippines and all these other places are watching, yeah. you know, getting, getting us all those views, I'm like, man, this. This one's gonna knock it out of the park. This is gonna be a hundred thousand in a week. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I think Thunderbird is actually my first movie after DK's because Blue Phoenix Three and Falcon Night Two are both short films, maybe about half an hour each, if that. Yeah. So the Thunderbird is gonna be a legit movie. That'll be my first one since DK's. So I'm excited to do that. Um, just um, because we Foster and I we shot the teaser couple weeks ago in the black hills and he's he's great to work with i'm very excited for you guys to be able to work together and everything nice. and just yeah. see how the, all this goes down I, i've never seen foster like in uh acting mode and stuff so it'd be cool to hang out and see what we come up with i think you guys are in are in similar boats whereas um you and i i don't know how am i gonna word this um Whereas you're both interested in that field, and this is like they're your first steps into it, and more, yeah, like you yeah. you obviously have more experience with DKs and more importantly the nine one one video, but um, <laughs> yeah, so you guys are in similar fields for that, and I'm excited to see that all come together because I mean, it I, has I'm already a, a, a twenty thousand view villain. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i and it, it'd be cool if we could maybe by the time it comes out if covid's a little more calmed down to have like screenings like around yeah. here and shit like public yep. screenings because unlike dk's or it's we couldn't really do that because it's so like rated r or it's thunderbird i think what was going to be a bit more pg-13 mm. and so we could show it around here. And I think people are gonna eat this shit up and it's gonna be great. Yeah, man, we for sure gotta try to like show it at like all the schools, you know, here, like all the surrounding areas. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be awesome. That'd be so sick. Like, um, hopefully, I, I have mixed opinions towards Todd County at this point, my former <laughs> high school, but maybe with it, they'll let us show it. Cause I'm, am, was, pretty tight with the principal so and I think it'd be cool for kids to see that um and this is a critique I kind of had and I talked about it with Shallon that Todd County is mostly focused on having people go into like the nursing industry or like sports medicine yeah and it's like those are your two fucking options and I think it'd be cool to show kids who maybe it might have an interest in filmmaking that it is possible and you can do it coming yeah. from Todd County. And then film too, there's so many jobs available. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know, like, I was, but like there's so many different things you go into. You go into sound, you could go into special effects, you could go into the oh, makeup. For sure. For like, sure. There's all these different things that kids could be talented at. 
Yeah, so many different avenues. And like, um, Brooke Espinosa, she did some of the makeup on DKs. And the reason she did so well with that is because she's like great at just makeup in general. Yeah. And so it's like all these skills that these kids could have that could apply to this industry that they don't even realize. And I feel like there needs to be a bigger emphasis on different career paths at that school. And um, I know I got asked by the middle school drama teacher to attend one of their lectures and talk to kids about my experience with acting, how all my shit I did on my own and everything and how it is a valid career path. And uh, I think it's cool. I think that's definitely something a lot of kids around here need. Yeah. Is like people other people leading by example and everything because um i didn't get into this particular path for like the fame and everything i wanted to do it to set examples to, like give kids something to look up to and everything and even maybe give other people like, give people like a an, an escape because for me growing up films were like my escape from like negativity and everything and that's kind of how I was raised up. Yeah. And so I think if I could do that for anyone else, it's like, it's fucking, it's 100% worth it, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That, that was kind of like part of my thinking lately with music, because I took like a long break from music. And then recently I was just like, you know, I, I got the skills to do it. Why not just do it? You know, the, you know, there's, it's, it's more important than uh, just me too, because there could be some other kid out there who's talented, but he doesn't even know it yet. He sees me mm-hmm. doing it and then he's like, you know, I could do it too. Boom, and then he does it. So it's like, I don't know. This just falls into that category of I'm trying to do as many things as I can. Like, that's my biggest thing is trying to prove to kids you could do anything you put your mind to, basically. Like, yeah. I, I've done so many things in my life and it's like, I just, it's almost just constant acting. You know, I just get into the mind state, like, you know, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I am. I'm going to do the research. I'm going to take it serious. You know? like a lot of times I feel like I'm a, a real like a, 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 an adult child and I'm just like playing <laughs> playing at all times you know what I mean oh yeah I I get that 100 percent like, I, like um, I was at the radio station I was like oh today I'm a radio DJ let me put these headphones on hey, morning everybody I'm a radio DJ yeah you tuned in mm-hmm. you know <laughs> oh I forgot so this isn't our first time doing something like this because we had a radio show together at one point oh cinemaniacs that was yeah that was really fun i wish we were on actual air at that time remember the it was only online because the tower yeah stuff, but mm-hmm. i think people would have loved that show yeah because we just like talk about movie news and everything movie reveals and it's something it's definitely something a lot of people around here are into yeah. so that would have been cool if it kept going but you know whatever <laughs> um and i guess we would kind of be suffering right now because there's not a lot of movie news lately because oh, of covid and shit dude i wanted to message you personally about uh what's up with marvel are we ever gonna get another marvel movie ever who knows i think they're trying to not put black widow on disney plus because i think that that way they'll kind of they're gonna lose money um we are supposed to be getting WandaVision at some point. Man, I hope so. This year. Um, yeah, I don't know. The, the, there's so many movies that are like filmed and done, but they're yeah. just waiting for theaters to open up. So I know yeah. um, T- Tenet was Christopher Nolan's latest movie. They released that in theaters. And I actually got to see it because I went to Denver and Denver's theaters are still open. Um, but it did like dog shit in the box office because so many other theaters aren't open. Yeah. And so I think yeah. that kind of scared off, scared off a lot of other people from doing that too. Like I know they released Mulan on Disney Plus and it's like with your subscription to Disney Plus, if you pay like another 30 bucks on top of that, then you get to watch it. Yeah. That but they also, <laughs> but then they also made, they made the mistake of like, oh, then it's going to be free for everyone to watch in December. Yeah, so and it's like, me, oh, wait. yeah, and I was I wasn't like dying to see that movie or anything, so I was like, I'll just wait till fucking December. I don't really care. Yeah, get it for free. <laughs> but and as much as I want to see Black Widow, 
I don't want them to release it on Disney Plus because I feel like that takes away from the theater experience, you know? Yeah, yeah, true. I don't know. I, I was kind of hoping that they just start. I don't know. I don't want theaters to be done, but at the same time, Mejan Kud, it would be like a brand new movie comes out and you just order it on your TV. Damn. Because, like, honestly, yeah. I, 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 I would pay like a lot of money to see a brand new Avenger movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, if they told me $60, I'd be like, all right, then, you know, I pay 90 for these UFC fights and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I might as well pay 90 on an Avengers movie, show it in my garage. That's true. Something. I <laughs> definitely think that's the direction we are heading in the industry is, is um, uh, mostly digital um, streaming and on demand and shit. Um, but like, but I'm also not completely for it because like, Endgame was such a fucking experience in theaters. Oh man, I wish I like, would have went pee during the Hawkeye part like I originally planned. But like, <laughs> once it came on, I was like, I'm not missing a second of this movie. Yeah, like, big thing of soda and a big thing of popcorn. Like, I had to pee so bad that like I barely, I didn't even touch my popcorn. I don't think I was just like. <laughs> I was just into the movie. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I think I saw that one opening night, like that Thursday, and just in the Avengers Assemble fucking scene, the, the crowd was losing it. And it was yeah. so cool. And that's the type of shit you don't get with at home movies and shit, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. I think there are pros and cons to both. And I guess we're just gonna have to wait it out and see what exactly is gonna happen. So I am out of questions. Do you have any questions for me about anything? Um, are, are you down to do any like side projects, any mini projects to kind of, in the meantime, fine tune your skills? Oh, all the time. Yeah. I, I, I love working on other shit. That, that's like why I did the the horror short and everything i actually we actually shot a um thanksgiving special while i was up there too which will be out for thanksgiving and yeah i'm always down to work on little things like um i i don't i don't know about this yet but i might be taking a gap semester in the spring just because i'm working on so many projects i want to be able to put all my focus into that and not be trying to juggle this in school and all this shit you know yeah so I might be doing that and then be returning to school in the fall. And I think as it is right now, I'm, I'm already going to be graduating either a semester late or a year late. Mm. But I feel like it's also not, it's not as big a deal. And it's not even a big deal at all as compared to like high school. Yeah. Like if you were to graduate in five years, it's like, what the fuck? When in college, like no one cares. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. Everyone at their own pace once they get to college. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't, I'm not too worried about graduating on time and anything. So I might be doing that. And so then if I, and then if I do do that, I will have so much fucking time for projects and shit. So True. yeah, I'm always down to do shit. Shoot, even, shoot, some uh, music, shoot some music videos or something. That's what I was, that's what I was alluding to slowly. Is like, <laughs> like a, you, you know, there's music videos where they have like a storyline and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be cool, like something like that. Because a lot of my music ain't even that long anyways, like like three minutes tops. So yeah. It's a quick little story or something. I'd be so down to do that, just extend my avenue and everything. Like you said, just doing a bunch of different shit. Yeah, yeah. Like like uh, working at the radio station, I didn't realize how uh, that it really sharpened up my uh, mu- music production skills. Like compared to other artists, I know like, a lot of the shortcuts, like I could, I could do basically everything on the keyboard. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like when I was kind of, I used to click around and all these different things. I'm kind of like, you know, chopping yeah. up, getting it done. Cause at the radio station, just working with raw audio all day and having to chop up people's, uh, whenever they speak and stuff, I chop all their stutters and I mean, mess up on things. And yeah. Just like, it really helped me out. And then like recording different ways, like with a tape recorder. I never really did that before. And then they, they bought one of those expensive ones. Yeah. I think uh, uh, producers use it for sampling mainly. But like I was able to record powwow singers with it. Like, oh, um, shit. It was pretty cool. 
like on uh on my Apple Music, if you look up Rolly Raps, I have a couple of powwow songs on there that I produced. Oh hell yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty cool working with different things like that, kind of switching it up. For sure. Like I I took multimedia with Natalie Johnny. People are God damn, are they watching an endgame in there? They're screaming <laughs> like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um no, I took multimedia with Natalie John or like my first year in high school and that completely expanded my avenue in terms of filmmaking and everything um so i think jesus christ <laughs> i don't know if you can hear that but i can a little bit okay um but yeah because i think i dabbled in film and everything like in middle school and i did little like cute side projects and shit uh, but nothing like serious i think a couple like me and brian burnett and a couple other guys we tried to do like a movie our eighth grade year but it just fell flat like almost immediately <laughs> um <laughs> and so um being able to take um natalie's natalie's class freshman year and learning that like kind of like what i want to do with kids like oh this this is an, an actual option for me if i go into this field and everything yeah. and actually learning learning how to like properly edit and how to shoot and everything it was great and so yeah i, I know what you mean and then having my avenues expanded to fucking even more when I got to college so I was like I was there I was like I'm the shit you know I know what I'm doing and then I, I got there I was like oh fuck no I don't <laughs> <laughs> and I don't really? think I'm ever gonna be at a point where I'm like I'm good where I am you know I think f going forward I'm always gonna be looking for looking to like get better at my craft and everything which I, which you should be you know yeah yeah you know one thing we don't have a lot of around here too is photographers like there's not a yeah. lot of people going into photography. I, I wish that was in 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 abundance because I'm always looking for people to do uh, sh photo shoots and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like you know, as a rapper and stuff, I'm on Instagram and I'm constantly trying to keep content coming, keep posting videos. Or, yeah. For sure, because we have like Mr. Kernet Grimshaw and yeah, yeah <laughs> I know at Schmidt. one point um chun was trying to get into it oh really but i think he sold his camera for some reason uh -huh. and so obviously he's not doing it anymore <laughs> um i've tried to get into photography and i'm slowly learning everything like um all the fucking the buttons and shit like it's, it's definitely there's definitely a lot more to it than just pointing a camera and taking a picture you know yeah yeah it's like a lot to it it's kind of I, I've been kind of looking into it a lot, just like editing my own pictures and stuff like that, but it's pretty tough. Dude, I had, I had the newest iPhone. I don't know if you saw my Instagram earlier this summer, but I grilled it on accident. Wait, what? You grilled it? Yeah. Like the, the phone wasn't brand new itself. I had it since it came out. Was it? What's the, what's the most latest iPhone? iPhone X or something? IPhone the late, like the one that just came out or last year's phone? last year because last year's was the 11 pro yeah yeah so 11. i had the 11 pro right and i just got a brand new grill i'm putting it together and stuff you know i'm so excited i'm like oh it's my first like cool grill you know like you know because i'm my dad i was like this, this is my grill my first one <laughs> like, and then, like i get it all put together boom fire it up i'm, I'm chilling and then i'm like damn this thing's smoking real bad i'm like is there still some plastic in there or something and then I'm like, just right when I say that, I reach for my pockets. I'm like, damn, fuck, my fucking phone's in there. Damn. <laughs> I open it up and sure enough, it's just like a bunch of smoke coming out. I like, I get the, the tongs and I grab it all the way. I grab my phone out and it's just crispy. Uh, like, done. <laughs> when was this? This was like uh, June, maybe. Okay. June, damn. Maybe August beginning of august okay yeah it sucks. so but like i was so pissed because i had so many good pictures on there because i was mm -hmm. it had like a really good camera i had the three cameras on there yeah and, uh, man all, all of it was gone and i had so many like cool edits on there and like graphics and animations that i did and gone yeah. <laughs> I, I i literally just got um the 12 pro no it's pretty damn. sick damn and, I haven't actually upgraded my phone in like 
since the the X. Yeah. And I just kind of held on to that for a while because it was fine and I didn't see a reason to really upgrade because they all kind of felt the same after that. But I, enough time had passed where my ex was basically, it was, like, it was done for. Like, <laughs> I'd run that fucking phone to the ground. Yeah. And so I was like, it's time to get a new one. So, and then this year's phone was very impressive to me with like the newer design and like the it, it, cameras. And yeah. And it's um, it has like this crazy like ceramic glass shit that protects it from breaking, but there is actually a new problem Apple has run run into, which I think is very interesting, where um, their glass it doesn't break as easy anymore, yeah. so you could dress you could drop it pretty fucking hard and it'll be fine, but now it's at a point where the glass survives, fucking hell, the glass survives, but it fucks with the internals. Dude, my, my phone's like that right now because my backup phone was iPhone X and I think I dropped it too many times because now, like, I think pressure goes onto the screen and it clicks on things for me. Mm-hmm. Like, just, it's just every once in a while. Yeah. Um, there was a guy, he did a drop test and he dropped the 12 Pro from, like, 10 feet or some shit and the glass was fine, but, like, the camera quit working. Damn, just connected. So, like, <laughs> Yeah, so it's like now their problem isn't that their phones are cra- are cracking, it's that the internal is getting fucked. So I'm kind of interested to see how Apple's going to solve that in the future, like, and if they do, you know. Fill it with uh, some some sort of electronic-friendly liquid. <laughs> <laughs> if that exists. <laughs> um, so I guess I just thought of one final question, which I think would be appropriate to end on. So, Big B and Richard fought twice. They fought the first time when um, Richard took his eye, and they fought a second time when he was a zombie. Yeah. Theor- theoretically, who would win in round three? Round three? Yeah, round three. If somehow it happened, who would fucking win? Richard have to win this time. <laughs> you have to bring a gun or something. <laughs> But yeah. you, you, you won the first time. Or I'd argue, actually, I'd argue you won both times, technically, because Bigby himself never beat you. It was Norman, because he shot oh, you twice. Dude. He shot me in the shoulder and then... Uh, and the head. Yeah, in the head. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think... One. I think End of Decay's Bigby would probably win because he's in such a darker headspace now after he's yeah. really, now he's now he's lost everyone like eye patch big v um so i i don't know it'd be interesting well, obviously it'll never fucking happen but like yeah it's fun to think about um so yeah i'm out of questions if you don't have any do you have any more for me no i think i'm good i think we got a solid uh solid podcast then awesome I well I think, <laughs> yeah it'll be i think it's out i have to like hurry the fuck up and edit this and it comes out tomorrow so nice. that's cool um, i'm gonna get to sharing it and everything right away oh yeah well thank you for joining me roly and thank you all for watching i will catch you on the next one yeah thank you